Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Tim. And Terry. I am a recovered alcoholic and I am an addiction counselor. And I'm an NSW. Um, and today's topic, Terry? Today's topic, we decided to talk about the messengers. So, we're going to start out with our definition of messenger. And it is a person who carries a message or is employed to carry messengers. messages. So there's different types of messenger messengers in your life, um, and they can be all types of people. So Tim, you want to talk about some of the types of messengers that people have in their life? Sure. It's um, you know uh, the messenger or the messages in, in life are developed obviously uh, at a very young age, and um, you know when when we're young, we're very influenced, um, we're very powerless. Um, and obviously our brain development is very uh, at a very infant state and we have these messages given to us in life and most of these real crit critical or crucial messages are given to us by you know our parents uh, these people that we look up to in awe and unfortunately though we don't have the ability like we are now between Terry and I and you discussing um, you know uh, 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 subjects like this uh, who are the messengers in your life. We just don't have that capability. So uh, we take a lot of things as word, as it's bond, it's in concrete. It's our parents, you know, these people that we look up to in awe. But unfortunately, um, we don't have the ability, like I said, to look at what's generating that message, what creates that message. You know, um, moms and dads are people too. Uh, I think their heart and, and their... And their um, you know, desires are, are good, um, but unfortunately, you know, people have resentments, people have insecurities, people have fears, and however I feel, inside is going to generate the message. Um, I believe that's true too, Tim, and it's also that um, a lot of times the messengers are people that we're close to. They're our parents, which we don't really have a choice of who our parents are. Um, they're mm -hmm. our spouse sometimes. They could be a friend. Uh, they could be people that we begin to feel like they're trustworthy and then we find out they're not. They're people that we uh, maybe are trying to find love from um, that can't give it to us. And we start believing these untruths because um, a lot of times it's people that are supposed to be loving us, right? People that are supposed to be supporting us. Um, and it's kind of like a conflict of thinking, like these are the people that are supposed to care about you, yet the messages that they're sending are not supportive, um, they're not building you up, and this you know, becomes a part of what you carry with you. So even if you grow up and you know you know that wasn't right, it still is in there, right? It's still a piece of the puzzle that's been missing. Um, so what do we do if we had messengers that we know probably weren't great for us? You know, what's the what's something that we could do, Tim, that you would recommend for somebody um, in order to see, you know, whether their messengers were um, healthy or maybe mm. not so healthy? That's a great question. You know, I we, we all have this incredible gift. And uh, this incredible gift is we all have the ability to change our thinking um, because it's our thinking that create, keeps creating these things that don't serve us well. And then these messages like we talked about in our first video, um, they have, they have a very, um, a very um, subtle approach. Um, so, um, you know, I, I need to ask myself, I need to challenge my thinking. Uh, because it's my thinking that keeps creating these things. It's my thinking that keeps allowing me to make these agreements with these messengers, uh, messages. You know, the, the, the message only has power um, if I make the agreement with it. Um, so how do I change this? Well, you can change this through, through challenging your thinking, listening to people like Terry and I, these types of videos. We work with it. Um, for me, as a recovered alcoholic, I was able to change the conversation that I was having for many years. I was able to challenge my thinking, and I was actually able to start to begin to separate the truth from the false. Um, yeah, it's it seems really simple, but again, it just takes work and it takes repetitiveness of doing it. So, a little bit of homework that we have for you, if this is something that you struggle with, is to make a list of one to five people who have taught you and built your belief systems. So it could be, um, you know, a variety of different sources. It could be one person that stands out into your mind. Um, then begin together to put together the pieces of where those messages came from. 
So, you know, if it was a parent and they, you know, weren't supportive and they weren't giving you the kind of nurturing that you needed, you know, look back at their life growing up, you know, maybe there was something missing in them and they had the, you know, inability to give you what you needed because they never got it either. Uh, once you start to look at those people, tell yourself it's not your fault. The messages came from them and they may not be true. Mm. And another thing um, that I think is really important when it comes to challenging your messengers in your life, um, you know, uh, whether your parents were alcoholic, um, whether their parents were alcoholic, was, uh, if their parents were alcoholic, now we're dealing with an adult child of an alcoholic and all the dysfunctions that come with that, the distorted belief systems that come with that. And in actuality, if it's untreated, they're, they're an adult child of an alcoholic that's, uh, that's untreated and now is having a child. So, um, you know, we can't transmit what we don't have. Um, you know, I'm not, not to be disrespectful or anything, but to keep it really simple because the more we complicate it, the worse it can get for all of us uh, and, and many things. But, you know, people can have a baby and people have babies uh, literally with their eyes closed. It's that easy to have a baby, but not everybody can be a mom or a dad. And when I'm working with people and Terry's working with people, uh, we're very disciplined in certain areas. One of those areas that we're disciplined in is to challenge the beginning um, because the beginning is um, very crucial, right? We have two very crucial stages in our life from zero to seven. Our basic human need needs to be met and that's emotional security. They just have to be met. And if, they don't, if they're not met, I go into my next critical stage, which is seven to 12 and I'm developing my social skills in that, in that point in my life. But if I'm going into my second critical stage in life, hopping on one leg, so to say, um, it, the outlook's not good. So it creates all kinds of distortion. It creates a very dysfunctional uh, way to live. So, you know, like we talked in the first video about happiness and this removal, we're just removed from self. Yeah, and... Um Again, the exercise that you can do is just simple. I mean, right here I just have some examples. Just write down three people in your life, a parent, a spouse, a friend. What it was that they sent you as a message that, you know, may not be correct. Um, and acknowledge it and, you know, start to look at where that came from. And the most important thing is realize the message was not true. Correct. Um, because you are... So worth it. Thank you so much for listening to our video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.